Hey everybody, it's me, Mr. G. It's the G unit. We are here in Marrakesh, Morocco, and we have all been awake for like 48 hours with no sleep, but we finally got in the Airbnb. We got groceries, we got dinner, we got the rental car, which decided not to start in the underground parking garage uh, below the store. Uh, then randomly chose to start again, so that was fun. Um, hoping the guy didn't accidentally put gasoline in it when it's diesel. Did say diesel, but you know, language barrier. We'll see if it fires up tomorrow. Um, but so far, so good. So, wish me luck. More updates to come after some sleep. Day two, Marrakesh, Morocco. After one hour of driving, trying to find parking in Old Town, which was a 47 minute walk, from our hotel we went back to the supermarket and parked and we're just walking anyway so lesson learned do not try and park anywhere near old town i believe this is the largest mosque in marrakesh and what we're using to navigate today So we did savory donut and now we are doing the local Marrakesh mint tea and it is really good. Next on the food tour appears to be some sort of bean soup. I don't know yet. We're gonna find out. Are we doing like a lentil soup or something? Here we go. Pretty good. It's like a minestrone. But a little bit thicker, not bad. All of tasting time. Daddy, I want to try one. I want to try one. We're good. So our final dinner of today. Traditional Moroccan food, grilled five hours in the coals of a fire. Boo, 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 boo. Yeah, let's take a look. Whoa. Carla, was it spicy? Was it a little bit spicy? Do you regret eating it? Next mission is to see if I can find where we parked the car, get it out of the parking garage, and get everybody home in one piece from the middle of the market, middle of Marrakesh. Wish me luck. All right, it's day three. It's day three. All right. That claims it's day four, but I think it's day three. Jet lag, very much catching up. We're in the Atlas Mountains somewhere. Going to the desert. We'll find out. We finally made it to the Atlas Mountains. Which, compared to Idaho Mountains, are pretty tiny. Mr. G is tired. So apparently, this town, Castle, 
has been in like 30 different films from like Gladiator, Game of Thrones, Kingdom of Heaven. A lot of the villagers here uh, have been extras in many films. Although very few people live in this village now because it's got no electricity and no running water. And this river, when it does run January through March, is salty. Life not easy for a lot of folks out here. All right. Apparently, lunch is in store, hopefully soon. And I heard tomorrow, Sahara. And then apparently a nine and a half hour bus ride back to Marrakesh. I am not looking forward to that. So, old city and then new city which has electricity and running water. And uh, that's where everybody lives. And uh, this has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1987. town in southern Morocco of which whose name I cannot pronounce or remember but uh, as you can see mud brick architecture pretty common but looks pretty cool <laughs> Intrepid travelers are feasting on whatever was left for the continental breakfast that you find at the edge of the Sahara. The hotel was frozen like an icebox built in 1947, and we're about to trek into the Sahara Desert, and absolutely nobody wants to be on camp. So back. Thanks, buddy. the saddest looking Santa Claus I've ever seen. He's having a very bad day. Why? I don't know. Today, before we go into the desert, we are walking through the coldest gorge and windiest, coldest place ever. Daddy? Everything in Morocco is all about the water. This village in this gorge has a spring that goes all year long. So you'll notice every little plot of land is designed to utilize maximum water. So in here we've got dates, cabbages, alfalfa. Yeah, I think that's alfalfa right there. And you notice they got different mixes of crops growing together. Kind of like the Native Americans with the three sisters, right? Corn, beans, and squash. Something a little bit similar.
Hey everybody, Mr. G checking in again. Well, we are continuing our drive into more and more desolate nothingness as we go from Scablands, Badlands, Rocklands to eventually the Sahara Desert. Almost on the border of Algeria, passing camels, villages, surprisingly nice roads. I imagine they never freeze, so they never crack or break like they do in the States. It's definitely making me appreciate uh, the United States and how green everything is. Imagine trying to make a living off of agriculture in land like this. Well, folks, um, we'll see where we end up. So I'm going to go see if I can get some lunch. We'll see how that goes, and I will update y'all later. Everyone is suiting up to go into the desert. Where's little G? He looks like a ninja. He's somewhere. It's camel time. Desert? Let's take a look. What? Looks like Prince of Persia. You me. Thus, the intrepid travelers packed what they could fit in their day bags to go find questionable camels of questionable authenticity to venture forth into the Sahara Desert. Will they return alive? I don't know. Have to wait and find out. But everybody's got scarves wrapped around their heads, so this is the real deal. I gotta say, you know, nice thing about a camel is you can get on on the ground and they stand up. Easy peasy to get on. They get up, it's a little high. They come with handlebars, so that's nice. You are significantly higher off the ground than when riding a horse, I will say that. Beck, what have you named your camel? Uh, it's either Tom Hanks, Dusty, or Sandy. I'm, I'm thinking. Okay. What'd you name your camel? <laughs> Camels have had a potty break while everybody was doing selfies, and now the intrepid travelers continue forward on their journey. Oh, and it's dusty now. Is it dusty now? That's so your camel's dusty or Jeffrey? No, well, yours is Jeffrey. Oh, mine's Jeffrey? Okay. I will say this of Sahara sand. It's like none of the sand back in the States. It's got more of like a brown hue to it than any sand we have. Back home. And it's so smooth. It's so fine. Like you could put this in an hourglass. It's just, there's no bits of glass or grit, anything. It's just, just sand. It's cold in a hurry and the wind really picks up when the sun goes down. Let's head to camp and see what's for dinner. After the sun set, the weary travelers mounted their camel caravan to find hopefully a campsite with food. I'm gonna hope for some warm tea and uh, hopefully a camel's not on the menu today. Right, Jeffrey? Okay. Electricity's out for this part of the tent. So we're rocking candles. So they ran out of beds for desert camping. So for the last 20 minutes, we've been constructing new beds. It's 
seven in the morning, it's freezing cold. My wife has a terrible headache and we're meant to get on some camels in the dark. Just another day in Morocco. I think we are going into a fossil mine. Can you go uh, in the left, in the right, not problem. Okay. Hey. Phone got lost. Oops. Oops. So we are leaving the Sahara back for Marrakesh today. Nobody's had a shower in a couple of days. And it's nine hours on a bus today. But if you guys didn't know, Morocco is known for its fossils. Yet another gas station in the middle of nowhere as we make the trek through some of the most barren desert straight road I've been on in a long time. Back to Marrakesh. And then tomorrow, cooking classes. And the next day, Chef Shawin. I'm looking forward when we go from Marrakesh to Chef Shawin to taking the rental car. Because riding the bus to the Sahara turns into like a 10 hour experience for what should maybe be a six hour drive. All right, so Mrs. G got like a super nasty fever and headache. So that was a rough night for her sleeping in a desert in a tent with drum solos going all night. Managed to find some ibuprofen at the pharmacy. That's a win. Now to try and find a little bit of water for the bus ride back. This morning, we're doing a cooking class and we're at the market to get ingredients. The chicken's not ready because it's still alive in the market and not butchered yet. So we're waiting for them to murder some chickens. So here we are at the local vegetable market and getting stuff for today's meal, which this guy's gonna help cook. We'll see how that goes. There are the chickens that we'll be eating later today, right back there. Oh my. How food comes from? We are already running our necks, buddy. Oh my God! Well, oh. oh, he broke your leg. Did we get to pluck the feathers? Yeah. And there goes his head. Throat slit. Right, we have vegetables, chicken, olive oil. And now fresh bread. What are you making, Mrs. G? Ooh, so we're doing some Indian. What's this? Uh, this is yellow stuff, right? It's preserved lemon. So hungry already. How, fre how fresh was the chicken? Uh, you can't get any fresher. Next, it's time for seasoning and spicing the chicken. We've got, what do we got? Pepper, salt, turmeric, cumin, and saffron. Them. We're making dessert oranges. Okay. Cinnamon, honey, okay. and orange Can blossom. Can you add cinnamon? Hi. If you want with your finger. Or how much? A little bit. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you like cinnamon, you want to make it. Let's have a look. <gasps> that looks awesome. awesome. Wow. That looks amazing. Wow. 
good. It looks better when it's Alright, you gotta take a bite. Is it good? Of how'd course. You, how'd your tangine chicken come out? Awesome. It looks tasty. Alright, he's busy eating. It must be good. Oh, mama's look pretty good too. Right, you gotta take a bite and tell me if it's spicy. Would you like? Did we overdo the chili? Let's find out. It's good. Yeah, this guy fixing the old cathode ray tubes. Now look at the TV through the video lens. See how it flickers? Why? Look, it doesn't in real life. These two are feeding kittens. Much like Istanbul in Turkey, Morocco has many, many, many stray kittens and cats. Hey, what are you doing in the back of a carriage with a large package, Mrs. G? Mm. <laughs> Getting the ride right back to our Airbnb. What'd you get? We got Moroccan lamps. Moroccan lamps. Do those work in 110? Yes, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> all right. No, that's your job. All right. No, I guess. Yeah, we were all tired of walking, so we're traveling via horse. I think it's day six today. Everybody's sick. I was up like all night. Mrs. G's been sick. Not feeling great. Gotta drive to Chef Shawin today. We're gonna see maybe if I can get some antibiotics over the counter. Sounds like Mrs. G maybe has pneumonia. Hopefully it's pneumonia, not COVID. Airplane, wish me luck. Somewhere on the expressway outside of Casablanca, we got like five and a half hours of driving to go and all the caffeine. Children have not drove me totally insane yet. Let's find out if we're gonna make it. We're driving the entire day. We get our own Riyadh. Riyadh is Arabic for garden courtyard. So we've got this whole very, very Moroccan Airbnb situation. Very Turkish looking, very Ottoman, very fun. Never have I stayed anywhere like this. I think everybody is done being in the car because it was the entire day in the car. But we've reached Chef Shawin. As you can see, it's the blue city. So we'll show you that tomorrow. I am so lost, but <laughs> This is a really cool maze of little blue alleys. Goal right now is to find Mrs. G cough drops at the pharmacy. We'll see if we can get it done. Day number one in Chef Shawin. We have left the hustle and bustle of Marrakesh to the much quieter mountain city in Northern Morocco of Chef Shawin. Um, the blue city is indeed very, very blue. So we're gonna be spending a few days here. Maybe we'll jump off to Tangier in a day or two, maybe we'll go down to the ocean. I don't know. Let's go find some coffee first of all. Getting some henna done by the local ladies of Chef Shawn. Oh, she's fast. Delicious. I don't know if this is the Spanish mosque or not. When we will go check it out. Argon oil. It looks like it's processing the argon to make argon oil. That's argon. What is argon? It's oil good for skin and I guess you can cook with it. to try and go catch some waterfalls. So it reminds me a lot of Croatia. This is really Mediterranean and beautiful. Let's see what we can find. So 
we just drove through like a village during market time because this was the nearest ocean to Chef Shawan. And it's strangely quiet and deserted, which is odd because everywhere here is super busy. Like the least touristy ocean I've ever been to. Rooftop dinner time. What is this, Mr. G? It's a camel burger. You guys don't have never had camel burger? It's kind of spicy. Tastes like oh, alpaca. Do you, like? do you want some? Here we are sitting in the dark. Classic Africa experience because what? Can you shut up? I turned on the hot water kettle, which overloaded the power and the power in our apartment is now out. We attempted to trip all of the breakers that you can see back there, yet that did not help and we are still without power. We'll wait and see if Airbnb guy can show up and show us where the breaker is, but it's a classic African adventure. This happened to us all the time in Abidjan. In fact, in Abidjan, we had to run an extension cord to our neighbors to have power, so you know, this is a normal thing. All right, good morning. Updates. What's today? Day eight, seven? I don't even know. We got Mrs. G some antibiotics today. She may or may not have pneumonia. Hopefully she's feeling better soon. It's a little stormy. We went north to Tangier today. And uh, as you can see, it's pretty windy. Let's go wander around Tangier and see what there is to see. Know you're in Morocco when you can spot random camels on the beach. Old City Market. Tangier on a rainy day. day in Chef Shawin. As you can see, it's the blue city. Um, hiked up to the Spanish Moss today. Maybe see if we can find some trails into these mountains. We'll find out. Bit of a rainy day. Uh, probably our rainiest well, day except for yesterday in Tangier was pretty wet. But let's go see what there is to see. All right, I can confirm, if you hike into the hills behind Chef Shawin, you will run into many a friendly Moroccan goat farmer. They would like to take you on a tour of the marijuana farms where they make hashish, because Morocco is the number one exporter of that. However, this is a family holiday, so not what we're doing on this particular tour, uh, but they're very friendly and very lovely. So, you know, just be aware when you're hiking above Chef Shawin. If you do hike above Chef Shallon to the National Park, follow the white and yellow markings to stay on the trail. Thank you, baby G. Here we are in the old Casbah and Chef Shallon. Couldn't find any babysitters for the kids, so we're just gonna shackle them into this old prison. All right guys, this is the prison. I want each of you in a shackle. I'm gonna shackle each of you to the wall. Hey, don't kill us. Choose which shackle you want. All right, shackle up. All right, 
Hey everybody, it's me, Mr. G, and it's 4.52 in the morning. Uh, we're at Marrakesh Airport, we're gonna head out, but to recap on this trip, I've gotta say, Morocco is a lovely blend of Africa and Europe together. Um, after my last experience uh, in West Africa, it was a little, you know, a little bit of trepidation for this trip, but Moroccan people were lovely. It was great. Just about everybody we worked with here spoke three to five languages, which is crazy. So Arabic, Spanish, French, and English, sometimes Italian thrown in the mix too. Um, if you're feeling like, I don't know if I can handle going to Morocco, uh, I wouldn't let that deter you. It's a beautiful place, lovely people. Uh, if you're thinking about driving, if you've driven in Europe before, you're probably gonna be just fine driving in Morocco. That being said, some of the big cities are a little bit chaotic and crazy as all big cities are, but if you've driven in like Naples, Italy, you'll be fine uh, driving here. So I'm gonna go see if I can find a coffee uh, and then hopefully sleep for some hours on the train and end up in the USA and then as usual, right back to work. So let's get to it. See you on the next one. Mr. G out.